Jenna. Hey guys, my name is Jenna and I'm going to be cooking a blackfish chowder for you guys. It's a very common dish in the Northeast. We can use pretty much any fish you really want, but my personal preference is blackfish. As far as this goes, a very simple, easy recipe. It's a recipe that was passed down to me from my grandmother and then I worked on it and perfected it. Friends love it. Like I said, it's simple and I'm here to share it with you guys. Okay, so our first step is gonna be to cut up your bacon. We're gonna cut up the bacon into about one inch pieces. The bacon's actually gonna go into the oven. You could fry it up if you want and you can actually use that grease eventually to use as your butter. But I personally like to put in the bacon in the oven and just start from there. So we're gonna put our oven on 350. And we're gonna put it in there for about like eight, 10 minutes. We don't wanna fully cook it all the way because it's gonna end up cooking in the chowder. Besides from putting the bacon in, we're also gonna have our vegetables prepped, such as your carrots and your celery. So a little pro tip about the carrots, I like to shave them just like this. You can shred it with just a regular vegetable shredder. I like to do this because the way it melts down, it melts down pretty nice instead of having chunks of carrots. And then you're also gonna chop up your celery. Celery, I mean, you can get it chopped pre-chopped already, I'm not gonna lie, I did that myself. It just saves time. So we're gonna get pre-chopped celery and shave our carrots down, okay? Next step would to be have is to have the fish prepped, okay? So we're gonna cut the fish up into little cubes and then we're also gonna go ahead and cook all that together. Okay, so when we're cutting up our fish, just be sure to check for any bones or pin bones that are left. So you would feel right down here, right down the middle, and you'll feel the bones. Sometimes if you do have the pin bones left, if you cut them, you're gonna cut out a nice little V and they'll come right out. So we're gonna go ahead and chop them up into cubes. And just so you guys do know, we also are gonna use some shallots. Shallots are gonna be used instead of using onions that you'll typically see used in some recipes. I like using the shallots better. They melt down a little better and I also like the taste. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started cooking with the chowder now. So I cut up the fish into some cubes like this. I threw a little salt and pepper on here just from some seasoning and taste. So we're gonna go ahead and put some butter in the pan. So I will say that this is Kerrygold butter, but you can use anything. But my biggest thing is I don't use measurements, really. I grew up in an Italian household with my grandmother teaching me how to cook. So we didn't really use measurements. It was kind of just more you eye everything. So that's really what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna provide you guys with close measurements and it should be perfectly fine that way. So just keep in mind that a lot of it does have to do with taste, so that's totally okay. So now that we have the butter melting, we're gonna wait for it to melt down, okay? So once it starts melting down, we're gonna throw in our shallots and then we're gonna throw in our fish at the same time. You're basically gonna brown the fish just like you would with chopped meat if you were gonna make a sauce. So now that we have our butter melting down right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take that bacon out. It's partially cooked. We're just gonna lay it right on top. See, we still have some grease left, so we're actually gonna use that grease and we're gonna save that and let it sit right here for now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by putting the shallots in the pot with the melted butter, okay? So we're gonna throw these in. Like I said, we're gonna brown them just like you would if you were making sauce or anything else like that. Okay, so now that the shallots are in, we're just gonna mix them around. We're gonna brown them up a little bit for about two minutes. We're gonna use a wooden spoon because it can also act as a weapon in case anybody around you is acting up. So then once these are browned, like I said, two minutes, we're gonna throw our fish in and then we're gonna start throwing our vegetables in, okay? Okay, so now that our shallots are almost brown, we're gonna go ahead and throw in the fish. So if you don't have a lot of room in your pot, you can do about half and half. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do half of it for a second. Just get it in there, start browning it up, mixing it in. And then once that cooks a little bit, once it starts getting the whitish color on the outside, that'll show that it's starting to cook. And then we're gonna throw in a little bit more fish and then we'll go ahead and throw in our vegetables. Okay, so now that the fish is cooked for the most part, like you don't wanna cook the fish all the way because it's gonna end up cooking in the chowder with that heat that's in there. So you just wanna stop cooking it right before it fully cooks. So you wanna get that white coloring on the outside where it's still a little pink on the inside, just like this. So the next step is to add our carrots in because we want those to melt down. We're gonna do the carrots first instead of the celery. Just because the celery, we're gonna still have some chunks left. The carrots is what's gonna melt down and also give you that nice orange color that you get. So you're gonna use your shredded carrots. Like I said, they melt down better when they're shredded like this. So we're gonna leave that in there. We're gonna mix it up for about 10, 15 minutes. And then once it hits about 10 minutes, we can start adding our celery in because the celery will eventually soften up. So now that we have our carrots that are finally starting to melt down, we're gonna add in our celery. I don't like too much celery in it. Like I said, I don't really do measurements, just per personal preference. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and put that amount in. I'd say that's about half a cup that I just put in. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix that up, let that sit down for another 10-15 minutes, and then we'll go ahead and start making the cream. So while your vegetables are cooking, you're going to add some garlic in there for flavor. Like I said, no real measurements, just going to go for flavor, okay? So while we have the vegetables cooked now and the fish really starting to cook, we're going to start throwing our seasoning. So I'm going to be doing about half a teaspoon of each seasoning. So I'm going to start with my white pepper. So like I said, it's just about... And this is all personal preference, so if you want to add in some spicier things like chili powder or paprika, red pepper, things like that, you can add that. This is thyme. And then, of course, good old Old Bay. A little more than half a teaspoon, but that's okay. I like my stuff a little spicy. So we're just going to go ahead and mix that up. And then we'll give it about a minute. And then after that, we'll really start getting into the whole chowder. So now that everything's really starting to cook down, we're going to start to add in our liquid. So that's going to be your chicken broth, and it's also going to be your heavy cream. We're going to take about two cups of chicken broth. So we're going to take our measuring cup, measure it up. You don't have to use chicken broth. You can use veggie broth. Um, you can use stock. There's a few other things that you could use, all personal preference. If you want to get more high protein in there, you can go get bone broth too. That would be great. So I'm going to take my two cups and just pour that right in. And then we're going to add our heavy cream in. So we're going to do about one pint of heavy cream. Um, I will say that sometimes it could be liquidy, it could be um, too thick. So that's why we always have one extra one just in case that way we can thin it up or we can th make it a little more thick. Um, and we'll make it more thick by using flour or wandra. Now you're just going to mix everything up. You're going to get that nice red color from those carrots and your seasoning. You're just going to mix it up for a couple minutes, let it sit, and then we're going to start to thicken it up with our flour. So our next step is going to be putting in flour or wandra. I personally use wandra. It's something that my grandmother always used, so that's what I just stick with using. You can use flour. This is just a personal preference. It does pretty much the same thing. It makes it nice and thick. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in, and it will start to thicken up. And you're going to eye it out to about how thick you want it. Some people like it a little more on the soupy side. I personally like it on the thicker side where it's nice and creamier. So I'm going to mix that in. And we're just going to keep messing around with it till we get that nice consistency that you prefer. So as far as time goes, it's kind of all a balancing act as far as, you know, how long it takes to cook and, you know, adding in your flowers and adding in your liquids because I've been going back and forth trying to make it that nice thick consistency. So you just want to keep in mind to that. But it's been about cooking for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes now we've been cooking for. So I'm just going to keep mixing. And now, now that it's all thick to the consistency that I personally like, I'm going to go ahead and add in my bacon. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in my bacon. I'm going to throw in that grease as well. If you want, like I said before, you can actually use this grease when you're cooking your vegetables for that extra flavor. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that bacon in there. Get all that grease in for that nice flavor. So now that everything's finally starting to come together, I'm going to start to add in my cheese. You can start with about two cups of cheese. I personally love cheese, so I'm going to add in a little more than that. And then we're going to save some, that way we can top it later when we're eating it. Okay, so now that everything's inside the pot, everything's cooking, we're going to go ahead and put the cover on it. So with that being said, you can eat it pretty much right now if you wanted to. But I like to let it sit for another half hour just to ensure that everything's cooked all the way through, especially that fish. You don't want any raw fish, but it's pretty much all cooked, like I said. So we're going to let it sit for another half hour, and then we're going to go ahead and eat. Okay, so now everything is finished. It's been sitting for quite some time. So I'm going to go ahead and plate them. So once I plate them, I'm going to 
add some cheese to it just because like I said I like cheese so I'm going to be adding some cheese to the top and then we can add some parsley to it you can get fresh parsley or just your regular parsley that's in the bottle so just so you know chowder actually has um it tastes better if you let it sit for a couple days, like two or three days. If it's sitting in the refrigerator for a couple days, the flavors really start to seep in and you get a better flavor in it. And also when it comes to storing it, if you don't want to eat all of it right away because it does make a lot, you can also actually freeze it right in a nice Ziploc container. So I'm just going to go add all that cheese that we love and then I'm going to top it with some parsley. And then we'll eat. So now we're all ready to eat. This looks absolutely amazing. I can't wait to eat it. So if there's anything else that you guys want to see made, any certain fish that you want to see prepared, let me know. Just drop a comment below and I'll be sure to look at them and we'll go from there and we'll see what else I can make. All right. Manja.